And we are live. Hey, doing people. Welcome to uh, the Sports Therapy Association podcast. Um, live every night or every night now, my dreams. Um, live every Tuesday at eight o'clock UK time. Um, and also available as a download if you prefer listening to the podcast. But we do like you to join us live if you want to. And you join us by going to YouTube, exclusively YouTube now. It's just far higher quality now than all this Facebook riffraff and stuff like that. So welcome. How are you doing? My name is Matt Phillips, creator of Run Chat Live. Um, and we're very excited to start a new month focusing this time on CPD. So I was thinking about this and I had a couple of emails saying, Matt, you're just choosing your favorite CPD. Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's true. I have looked around for something which maybe I'm not kind of into and the idea of having um, the person who runs that course up as a guest. But I don't think it'd be very productive. I think it'd just be a little bit of a stalemate. Well, not really. You know, the world wasn't created in seven days. So how are you basing a course in it sort of thing? So it's a bit tricky. Um, so, yeah, there is a certain bias going on. The courses we introduce in this month, we're not saying you need to do this course, though. Don't confuse it with that. And I sent, I sent quite a lengthy email back to somebody who was getting a bit standoffish saying, oh, you're just going to promote stuff from your mates. And it's not that at all, because the people we have this month um, are not people who we say you should do their course. OK, we've said in the last 89 episodes of Sports Therapy Association that the CPD you choose um, is decided by what kind of person you are, what kind of business you've got and what your future holds for you, whether you're in a clinic with lots of people. You know, there's so many different factors and so no one can say this is the CPD for you. So the idea of this is we're just going to provide you with a little bit. We're going to sow the seeds. Yeah, we sow the seeds and then you can grow the seeds if you choose to. OK, so we'll get that out of the way, first of all. Um, but thank you to the person who emailed me and had a go. It does. It makes me think it's good. So before we go into uh, this focus on CPD for March at the Sports Therapy Association podcast, um, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, the finale last week. Did you catch it? The last episode of um, our focus in February on women's health. It was a great, great hour. I really enjoyed it. Um, but then again, I mean, I love Emma and uh, Gwania to bits. They're fantastic educators and just um, amazing way of putting a topic which is so taboo, unfortunately, in our society and uh, and, and just teach it so well. So uh, we did have um, Emma and Gwania um, talking about their new um, online course, The Athletic Female, last week. Uh, it was an amazing conversation. It uncovered so much. Again, we just ran out of time completely. Sadly, um, uh, Dr. Helen um, uh, McCroy couldn't be with us uh, because of other things going on, but there are three of them who have put this athletic course together. And it's already growing into a massive community uh, with a Facebook group, which I recommend um, if you are interested in improving your knowledge of women's uh, health, um, and let's face it, probably 50% of your clients or more are women, so it's probably a good idea, um, then that's one avenue I would encourage you to consider. Um, so check it out at theathleticfemale.com. Calm, 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 calm. Right, um, and, and then also all of the other episodes of the Women's Health are also, um, if you want to watch the video on YouTube, or you can catch up with it on your podcast player, whatever you fancy. It could be Spotify, it could be Pocket Stream, it could be the natural player you have in your, your iphone people i think you've got your own innate kind of podcast player in your phone it's very easy and they're all there if you prefer listen to audio um so there's the one where we had two mats and a woman that's on there as well the woman whose name is actually katie we found out after recording it and we also had a um, fantastic episode with um about the menopause with Dr., with jenny barrel which was great focusing on uh, the men transition and we started off a very exciting one with dr fiona higgs and deborah thurlow roley which was all about their new project uh wist women in sports therapy it's already started really impressive i i listen to lots of podcasts us now on spotify um i don't know rogan dragged me over there i'm pulling me hung for saying that but it took me over there and um and yeah so dr fiona higgs and deborah thurlow roley um massive educators and always friends to the sta um they have started producing a fantastic podcast i would suggest you check that out i know it's another podcast but give it a little listen right let's get rid of that now we're going to start off tonight so it's been so interesting talking to these guys because i know people in the house who are joining us probably have heard of dermo neuromodulation you know because you're the kind of geeky people who give up your tuesday night to join us 89 weeks in a row um for example becky carroll good to see you in the house again if you do join us live the nice thing is that you can't see this if you listen to the podcast but um your comments i can bring up on the screen and also you get to flash um your facebook logo 
um, which is always nice. It might be your your actual professional logo. It could be a picture of you in a variety of hats, as Becky Carroll tends to fashion when she joins us. Um, so thank you for joining us, Becky. I think you've probably joined us for at least 80 episodes out of 90, if not all of them. Stephen Barr is also here. Hey, Stevie, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Gary Benson, founder of the Sports Therapy Association, is here as well. How are you doing, Gary? Steve Kirby has also come in. Um, so, yeah do come and, and more people are coming in as we speak. So you're welcome to come and join us. You don't have to be an STA member. It's a really nice way of getting to know what the STA is about and just meet people who are soft tissue therapists, maybe, especially if you're from the UK, you're going to meet people in your area. There's, there's so many members in the STA and a lot of them come and join us on these recordings. Um, where all of these forums of, oh, I want to do level five, where shall I go? Which just amazed me on, on Facebook. And the answer is always the same, really. It's like, we'll go and check out and talk to some of the members see what it's about you know don't listen to just one person tells you so right blah 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 that's enough let's go and bring my guests up now sadly the people who are teaching the courses are just so busy and famous that um they can't come and join us uh, plus they're in a totally different time zone but we have got um the hosts of the course and two people are very knowledgeable and um are definitely gonna be the names as far as Dermo neuromodulation goes in the UK. So I'm going to bring these guys up now. Um, and they are no less than, and they're famous as well in their own right, uh, particularly the first one who's now on day 120 something of his run streak. So Daniel Williams is be joining us. And also some bloke called Mike Rice. Hey, Daniel. Hello, you all right? And hey, Mike. How you doing? How you doing? I'm it's sorry about that. That was a far, far lengthier. Um, um, introduction than i meant i was enjoying it it was good sorry to yeah. leave you down there in the in the shadows but i'm very excited that you're joining us um and really excited about the topic and you're starting off our look at cpd i thought it was important i did get a, a quite a bitchy bitchy email that's kind of in case they're listening i did get a, a, an annoying annoyed annoying freudian slip annoyed email kind of saying what's the point of doing a cpd month when you're just going to choose the ones you like kind of thing so i think it was important i know you two guys are very much championing the fact that there's no one cpd for everyone is there that's impossible no exactly yeah yeah and uh, and if people like what we do tonight then great and if they don't no worries there's loads of other stuff out there so you can choose whatever's right for you yeah exactly it all very much depends like i say on on what your goals are and that's the advantage of talking to somebody who's been in the game a little bit who can listen to you like mentorship and stuff because they'll listen to what you who you are <laughs> and then kind of tell you what might be a good idea for you it's kind of what we should be doing with patients really rather than just going and saying this is what you need yeah you know, we kind of listen it's a weird concept isn't it um daniel how you doing yeah. welcome to the show yeah, it's first time on here, so it's a uh, it's, it's a bit nerve wracking actually. I was, like, time I, was, on, exactly. I was sweating before I came on. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was very very impressed you got the uh, like dermo neuromodulation right because the, in the preceding this you were like dermo. D oh. d <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. but you nailed it. It was perfect. It's um it's it's because I'm doing this sleep study and I've been struggling with polysomnia. I can't still can't say it. Polysomnogram. <laughs> um, yeah. I've I decided I'll be practicing dermo neuromodulation today. It rolls off the tongue a little bit easier, but it's interesting because and I think we maybe we should start off with this first of all. Mm -hmm. Um it's not a catchy name, is it? In terms of people going, Oh, I love some of that. It it's not one you immediately Google, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder if there's anything out there in derm derm dermo neuromodulation. It's a shame in a sense. But this is part of the struggle with CPD, isn't it? And using Google to base your decisions on it doesn't work. If you Google what CPD should I do, you'll get probably the tackiest, best marketed kind of, what's it called, clickbait course out there. So don't yeah. go by what Google gives you. Yeah. Let's talk about what derma neuromodulation is and why it was given that name. Well, I, th I, I think it, it's really good that it's called that name because people don't really sort of know what it is. It's a bit of a talking point, but um, I mean, it's the total opposite of like a marketing sort of scammy sort of uh, course or name anyway, because uh, in the essence, it is what it says on the tin in a scientific words, dermo skin, uh, neuro, nerves, modulation, change. It's basically what we're doing when we touch people anyway. So it's good. It, it, well, once you delve into it, it's really simple. But on the face of it, it's it's like, huh, what's that? But um, yeah, I think it's quite, kind of very ethical in what, what it's actually teaching as well, as you'll probably hear tonight. But it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's very 
uh, scientific. It's very the concepts behind stuff uh, and everything. But um, yeah, it's it, it, it uh, it's the total opposite of uh, your faddy marketing five ways to do this or your advanced massage course or something like that. When it's kind of actually it's kind of under but underpinning it all that of mm. touch and what we do um yeah it's 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 tricky isn't it if you if you are listening to this i know people in the room we always get this we were talking about this off air as well people who have come to join us live because they've watched a few shows they kind of know what we're about and we know they know that there's a lot of marketing out there which is trying to sell something by using the tag words and spending money on google analytics and all this sort of stuff and they'll drag you in and make you pay two grand and then you'll kind of go why am I drinking this kind of Coca-Cola? I don't even like Coca-Cola because you've seen it three times and the name is kind of like, you know, an alliteration. It's all this kind of stuff going on. And it's, and it's, but the people are downloading this podcast. Please don't get offended if you think, oh, I, I use Google and I found something I like because we're not having to go at you. And this is the safe tree here. If it's a shock to you that Google is actually chucking up um, common in the worst sense of the word, popular in the worst sense of the word results then this is going to be a good learning curve for you and yeah it's nice what you say danny when you look when you break it down and stop and actually translate it into what we're talking about it is yeah just skin nerves and changing beautiful yeah. yeah i think that one of the key things for me is um whatever course you go on and whatever course i've ever been on is dermo neuromodulation that's exactly what it's exactly what it is and uh, and all of those all of those courses that are advertised and top of the list in Google, they are still dermo neuromodulation uh, when you when you look at the the nuts and bolts of it. And I think that that's the beauty of the. It's not it's not a technique. It's uh, it's more of a a reasoning about everything that we do as manual therapists, and it helps us to try to make. It helps us try to be less wrong. I think that this is the best the best explanation we have for what we currently um know about what we do that's again again i'm really going to gear tonight towards people who are maybe listening to the first time people who don't know who mike grice is that's the sort of level we're going for tonight <laughs> people haven't heard of you um you know who are these people like? exactly <laughs> because Does that's that who we want to reach out to so you said there for example let's take it back to base and strip it back a bit you said if we can be less wrong uh huh. I don't want to gloss over that because we use it and chuck it around because it's a really nice kind of way of suggesting where manual therapy is at the moment. But what do you mean by um, it's the best way to be less wrong? So um, previous courses and degree course <laughs> was very much a, a structural approach to how we make changes with our with our patients. And they they were very good explanations back at the back in that time because we didn't really have any other way of explaining what we did um so we use things like the anatomy trains um as a concept of of fascia and that is why when we're doing some treatment on somebody's leg then it can help their shoulder you know all of those kind of things and that and that that was a plausible explanation back at the time and then uh, research is then done on those uh, topics because at the time their theories they they um uh, they're the best guess at, at that time and when you when you look at the research that's been done on those concepts then we realize that it, it's probably not what's happening but when we're when we're treating those things we can't change the fascia so uh and we you know we've had loads of guests on talking about um talking about that the only thing we can touch when we do manual therapy is the skin and that is it and uh it, so if you're trying to affect something deeper than that um through uh through touch um you need a heck of a lot of force to deform fascia um for example, i think it's something like 460 kilos of sheer force to deform the IT band by 1%. That, that is a ridiculous amount of force that you, it's not physiologically possible to do it with your hands. But when you treat someone's IT band, it feels better. So the explanations of us elongating the fascia, elongating the IT band, and that is why it's working. We know that's very, very unlikely. So, um, so this, 
way of explaining things is probably the um, the best way we've got to explain it right now. So if we, if we look kind of 15 years down the line, there may be another layer of complexity that we find out about and that we can measure that gives us a better way of explaining it again. Um, but at the moment, we, we think that this is probably the best way to explain what we do. That's really good. You, 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 you should teach anatomy for a living or something. You, you teach well, man. That's really well put. <laughs> you should, uh, Catherine Reimer actually has says in here, who doesn't know Mike Grice? That's just coming up on the screen there. If you listen to the podcast, you can't see it, but these are just a few comments coming in from the screen there. And now I get why Catherine Reimer actually started off and came in the, in the show, just saying, hi everyone. It's Anato Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I get what's happening here. I get what's happening here. She's been well drilled. Well done. <laughs> That's really cool. I mean, and that last um, three minutes, if you are listening to the podcast and that's kind of new to you, just kind of play that over a few times because we I, we can take it for granted. But to hear it put that way from someone like Mike is much calmer and gives you time to think about it than what you're going to read on Twitter or something or Facebook where you've got someone shouting going, manual therapy sucks or you can't break down scar tissue. What do you think you're doing, you idiot? You know, all this sort of stuff. Obviously, that's just going to rile you up and it's either going to make you get depressed and give up, which we don't want, or it's going to make you angry and keep doing even more just manual therapy stuff. And no one's mm -hmm. saying stop touching people at all. Are they, Daniel? And this is what this course is about. It's no. not about stop touching people. No. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we're we're social be beings, aren't we? Like we've we've evolved all, uh, as Diane says, it's like all, all vertebrates groom. Uh, and as she says, some get us some food out of it and a, a bite to eat. Uh, we don't. Uh, and uh, uh, and I'm very much in the camp of Diane. I like to get paid to groom, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like she, as she said. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. And uh, I can do some of it myself, like touching and self-care and stuff like that to kind of like uh, move and make myself feel better before I go for a run or after or train or anything like that. But yeah, I, I like to go and get somebody else to give me a massage and chill me out as well. It's, uh, it's one of those. But yeah i mean if it, if you like massage and you'd like to be touched i think that's an important point is uh some people do not like to be touched they don't like massages they don't like manual therapy that's okay uh, and i think the whole concept of dnm as well is it, it's it's that person-centric approach still but for people who like to be touched because mm -hmm. they're seeking you out for a reason they know it they, they, they have a perception that uh, a massage is going to work for them so that already is is a bias there that's going to help but uh yeah we know it works otherwise we wouldn't have an industry mm -hmm. but it, as mike said try, to try and be less wrong and try and educate our clients uh, and our patients as well to to not give them nocebos to to give them wrong advice uh, uh as well and uh, and also to have that narrative where we're kind of we can plan our treatments and the long-term effects of the treatment a hell of a lot better because we know kind of what what's happening more instead of what we're trying to affect and then setting ourselves up for failure because we're never going to affect that we're never going to break down scar tissue okay cool but it's doing something <laughs> it's uh, and this is the more likely reason like like mike said excellent yeah again really nice uh, really nice explanation we've mentioned diane a few times now i suppose you don't have to but if you really want to understand um dnm let's call it dnm for now shall we <laughs> if you really understand dnm then it's useful to kind of know a bit about diane jacobs and her background and where she's come from because we're not talking about a course it's just another acronym that's been invented and churned out oh. are we it's been it's been i don't know when she first used the term but diane's been around for a while isn't she tell us a little bit about diane jacobs so but from what i know about her um i met i met her very briefly um i we had some guys um that have come back from san diego recently uh i i went to the first pain summit in 2014 2015 uh, i think it was 2015 and uh, i met diane there mm -hmm. And uh, she did one of the um, uh, she did one of the uh, presentations there but, well, well, on that first session, and that's when I first got introduced to to DNM and and Diane. And she talked about how her main um, 
she, uh, she, she was from a physical therapy background, but she had a real special interest in the, in the nervous system. And then she started to really look into how the um, how what she was doing in manual therapy was affecting the nervous system. And and that and that's when she wrote her book and how she put a book together. And um, quite interestingly, we, we did a few um, we did a few adverts about about the course a few weeks ago. And some people say, what, what's the evidence for DNM? And, uh, and it's probably one of the most researched topics I have ever seen in manual therapy. So her book has got something like 400 journal references in. It's ridiculous. Every single part of the concepts of everything that she's put together uh, has, is backed up in, in, um, in the scientific literature. There are some um, there are some assumptions made because we still need to make some assumptions with the information that we have. Um, but the the large majority of the of the philosophy behind what what it is uh, has got a very good evidence base. And and she's a very very good um, she's a very good researcher. Uh, to, you know the the way that she gets across. Um, as she's loads of YouTube videos. So if you haven't heard of Diane, then it's good good to uh, have a look at what she's done in the past. But um, yeah, her her uh, her explanation of the nervous system and her knowledge of neuroanatomy is just off the planet. It's um, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, I don't know whether you know anything more about her, Dan, because um, I know that you've you've contacted her a bit as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, we tried to get her over herself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that would have been a dream. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, and. Uh, yeah, unfortunately she's retired now so yeah it's uh, it's one of those she, she, she won't come over um uh, she's very very happy being retired uh, we think as a, from what she said uh, I, i've talked to her a bit about like um getting her over and everything and what we could do and obviously teaching dnm here and she's she's very very much an open book with that and and like uh, mm -hmm. open source knowledge and i think that's perfect because it's exactly what we we should all strive to be uh, as well she's Kind of a bit of an idol uh to be honest um yeah, she, she's very much like yeah use my images yeah yeah just ask me yeah use use that um here's all the research boom straight on a google file here yeah. it is yeah have a read go that, for it that, that's a really good point actually so you don't have to sign an nda you know to, yeah. when, you, when you talk to diane and you talk about the philosophy of her course and um and everything behind it she just she shows you everything that it's, it's exactly like it should be so then you can then go and read the research that she's read to put to put together her book and put together the uh, the concepts and and then you can critically analyze those papers uh where, whereas um, some other courses that have been on in the past are very guarded uh, with that kind of information and they don't they don't want to let it go so that this is completely the opposite and like dan said there literally is a google drive with everything in it it's, it's a bit like greg layman greg layman does the same you know he goes here's my stuff boom there, there it is that that's what i've looked at if you mm. think of something in a different way then that's fine it, it, you know we can have a chat about that and uh, I, re I really really like that approach it's it's um yeah it's very refreshing it's interesting because when kind of therapists go through the change not the menopause we're past that now that was all last month but when they go through the change as in that i think that coin drop moment which we've all kind of had often it's because you've found a great thinker who you've connected with it might have been in my case it was like paul ingram it was tony ingram it was definitely kind of butler and mosley and all that kind of stuff but and often the person who you need to listen to to help that coin drop and you go i get it now is going to change depending on the individual mm -hmm. so it can be useful to point out and check out you know like dan says google diane jacobs look at some of the videos out there because it might be the type of person with the type of humor or the type of presence or the or maybe it's the fact it's a woman instead of a guy or whatever it is for you to actually open up and listen as opposed to just hearing it to actually kind of all oh, right i get it because it's what it's all about um but i'm conscious as well that for a lot of people they don't give a crap they don't care who these people are and they're never going to look at a lot of them, mostly video and it's just it's probably the minority who are actually really geeky and want to get into it yeah. so 
it's there. We'll just put it, we'll leave it there for you. Okay. Podcast listeners, check out Diane Jacobs. And also by, once you follow one of these people, just get a little bit into them. Then suddenly it'll be like a little spider kind of, I can't think of what's called now, spider diagram or something where you'll get links to people like <laughs> Jason Silvernell or, or Paul, uh, Paul Ingram or Tony Ingram or kind of Greg Lehman and all that sort of stuff. Cause it's all, or Todd Hargrove, it's all coming from the same kind of area. Once you understand um, the particular paper for me, 2011 paper, was mentioning um, Silvernell was Silvernell and Diane Jacobs, which was the um, um, operator or interactor, or operator facilitator, mm -hmm. facilitator, which was all about, wasn't it? Are we as as therapists like operators, where we lie someone down on a couch and we start doing stuff to them and yeah, sawing yeah. and chopping, or are we interactors where we work with the patient? And for me, when I read that paper in my humble way just it was enough for me to go that's amazing distinction okay i'm not working on this person anymore i'm not a surgeon i'm listening and working with them and finding out what can help them self-manage mm -hmm. and you know it's a massive big distinction so but for the purposes of today i want to get into what people are going to actually get from um studying um are doing this it's live isn't it that's a quite a big difference because a lot of online stuff at the moment was that always like with something which is so hands-on as well as talking about language and stuff is that a big thing did it have to be live from the beginning do you think yeah i think um yeah i i think that's really important um uh, like uh, as mike riak who's coming for the first one in march says he's like there's a lot of stuff that he does in the two days that you can sort of teach and get to grips with and stuff like that um, but then the three days is the extra bit where you're kind of spanning it out and you're you're learning from one another and uh, you're kind of getting that live feedback from live skin. Um, you, you've got to have a body, but not just one body. It's it's kind of everyone around. You swap around, you you touch different body parts and stuff like that in a non-pervy way. It's very much sort of there. Uh, it's it sort of, you sort of rotate and you, you feel different people. I know we all do this on courses and our original qualifications like 100 hours of massage and stuff like that well we, we've got three days of intensive uh, uh dnm sort of stuff where you learn the concepts and change your narrative of what you're seeking uh, and trying to achieve with the with that as opposed to what you may have been doing before which is what you were taught it, years ago or last week or the last time you qualified or the last cpd you went on which was maybe more structural uh, and maybe going for more the nerves and touching people a lot lighter. Uh, and that's that's the big difference, apparently, with uh, what Diane's work does. It's, it's kind of, it, it's the light touch, it's the movement of the skin that's going to change that sensation and allow the brain to uh, respond over time and adapt like we all do. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the powerful thing. Uh, and then Ray's coming in June, whereby you have a few months to actually practice on all your patients then come back in june see ray and go he has a different approach to dnm and his stuff so you're learning from someone different but also he can answer all those questions that you've developed over those months and go oh i had this patient and uh, they, they had this this and this could i have done something different uh and me and mike can go yeah well i would have done this uh, somebody else in the room could have gone yeah well i would have done this and it's not just the whole like this set protocol do this technique for this thing it's a uh, this is the concept play with it mm -hmm. i think i think that's really important as well it's, um uh, it adds a layer another layer of clinical reasoning in so if you're a clinician um or kind of learning about clinical reasoning the uh the one of the biggest things for me and one of the things i'm most excited about um uh, having the guys come over and doing the course is because of um the level of neuroanatomy uh, that we're going to go into and uh and that and that for me is just a dream <laughs> love all that kind of stuff so um and that there's uh, if you've ever done a rock tape course we've done uh, we talk about this a lot on rock tape is the hilton's law from 1863 so this concept of dermo neural modulation is not a new concept um in 1863 this guy said the nerves that innovate the muscles 
um, also have branches off of those nerves that innervate the joints, so the articular branches uh, of the joints underneath of those muscles, and they also sometimes innervate the skin above it as well, so the cutaneous nerves. So you've got three layers of these nerves. We've got the cutaneous nerves in the skin, the motor nerves for the muscles, the articular nerves for the, uh, for the uh, joints, so the synovial membranes and capsules. And by uh, and we don't we don't fully understand it, but we know that there's a change. We know that there's a modulation. So if you touch the skin around the knee, it makes your knee feel better. If you touch the skin around your hip, it makes your hip feel better. So and this was the concept that Hilton was um, thinking about back in the 1800s, and um, and now we've got some more plausible arguments as to as to why that uh, that is happening. So. Um, and, and if you think about it, that, that's going to add in the cutaneous nerves to your clinical reasoning. So when someone has a problem somewhere, we don't we we can then think about the other structures that are in that that area, how we can affect them, and then the influence that may have on deeper structures, but without jabbing your elbow in because you, you don't need to. And that, and that that's the thing that's going to be really fascinating for me. I'm looking forward to to hearing how the guys teach that. There's an awful lot sitting back and listening to both of you, which kind of to me, I mean, I follow Diane for a long time. Like I say, I've never got to know, I've never done a DNM course and I've never really found anything which actually describes what is learned on the course. Maybe because I haven't dug, dug and dug and dug and deep enough, but, and Diane's such a fascinating person and you just watch a thread and listen to arguments unfold and discussions. And it's just, you get caught up in that and it's just, that's the cell for me anyway, being a bit of a geek, but it sounds to me like it's kind of bringing together everything that's we've kind of been talking about in 89 episodes now where we've been defending um, soft tissue therapy a lot on the show mm -hmm. because we're aware of, of, of the pendulum swinging too far the other way and everyone getting too psychosocial and thinking that the biology doesn't matter anymore sort of thing which is swinging too far which always happens in discussions but it sounds like and i've always suspected this knowing diane's background that this course kind of brings it all together nicely so mm -hmm. for somebody who is arguing that we still need to touch people, we still need that, like you say, primate grooming, and it's, it's a massively important part for most human beings in health and recovery. So we really are putting the whole psychosocial with the bio together um, so it makes sense. Is that a fair way, do you think, of describing? That's the interpretation I've got of DNM, even though I haven't looked into the content. Yeah, I think, I, well, uh, on re-watching uh, Diane's uh, lecture at 2015 that Mike was at. Unfortunately, I had to watch the recording. Uh, I've watched it several times, but uh, as she goes through that, it's, uh, it's um, she, she includes the biopsychosocial model in everything that she does. And it, she was very much from uh, working with Butler and stuff in the late 90s uh, and then bringing it back uh, and deconstructing that and all the pain science stuff from there and going, adding in that manual therapy and uh, then doing all, all the cutaneous nerve stuff um it kind of made sense and then all the references like mike said as well but the the whole initial if you as she did on that lecture it was kind of she ran through a, what she would do with the patient manual therapy is the last thing uh that, that she would do it's all the context before the the history uh the the whole uh sort of like listening to the patient asking them what they want and uh, that sort of interact a sort of thing that you mentioned before Matt it, it's very much that and then uh, as she said manual therapy is always optional but it can be optimal and that's very interesting because you kind of it, for that person that really wants to be touched really wants that external stimulus to be like to feel safe in their environment and give them permission to move or give them permission to kind of move in a certain way that they thought or they feared or they were scared of doing because and then they get that noxious input and, and pain uh that's that's really powerful and uh that might not be just the short-term effects of that because you're affecting that system and the brain and that fearful movement that could be one thing that you do and then they don't have that pain again Mm -hmm. which is really weird. And I know Mike's had a few people like that. I've had a few people like that, whereby you've done one thing with them, they their kinesiophobia is gone, 
because you've either touched, you've done something, done something that we've done in the clinic and it's really hit home. And then they've had that long-term effect of permission to move. Mm -hmm. Mike, you're going to have to, I don't interrupt there. That's just beautiful what you said. <laughs> <laughs> when I say now, we'll bring it down. It was, it was great. I'll just sign off now. Continue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to book in to see Dan tomorrow. Um, <laughs> let's see that. I think this is the, because uh, for those of you that don't know, Dan and I work together in the same, in the same clinic. And um, and we we do this on a daily basis. This is what we do with our with our patients. We're, we're, um, we've got two clinic rooms and a big gym, um, so it's not it's not just a clinic space uh, where we do manual therapy. We 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 bring people into the gym space um, so that they they can. Uh, they can exercise again they can move again or whatever it is that they want to do and uh and we will integrate manual therapy onto the gym floor and um i think that that's going to be a good thing with with the space that we've got actually dan is uh, we'll, we'll we'll be able to incorporate that into into the way that the course is is taught um and um yeah i mean god we, we've had uh, the, and again you, we don't need to use your hands either so we, we use um as you know, we use like massage tools. No, it doesn't break down scar tissue. No, it doesn't do all those things, but it's a different sensation on that area that's sore. Then I get them moving and we get them into the gym. So those those movements that they, they couldn't do before, they were, like Dan said, they were fearful of doing. Now they can do them. And, um, and then they're like, ah, oh, it doesn't hurt now. And because their whole issue usually is they're worried about doing damage because it hurts and then that's all the explained pain stuff then comes in so all all of the all of the butler and mosley explained pain book is then layered into it and it's and it's it, it's i mean god we're by no means perfect in, in what we do and there are some people that we don't help but we we do um we do try to drip feed this um whole biopsychosocial model with everything that we do and and that and that's that's how we do things in clinic so it's uh yeah um it's, it's funny because we often have chats dan and i about um about what what we do and um because we have had some um, students come in as um part of a mental program and uh they're they're kind of um a bit shocked with some of the stuff that we do uh, and we're like well we've been doing this for years <laughs> and uh we haven't really th we haven't really reflected on actually how different we we do things and uh, and we do incorporate all of this stuff but it's with it's with the dnm concept uh and 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 we try to get that concept across to the patients as well to explain to them why we're doing what we're doing because especially some that that want a heavier touch and that want a more you know a deeper massage and and sometimes that they're, they're sometimes we can win them around sometimes we can't you know it's just it's just the way it's just the way it is and they'll go somewhere and and have an elbow um uh, and that's what they want and that's fine it's uh um but yeah we we've been we've been living breathing this for um quite some time now well since i came back from san diego <laughs> that's uh yeah it's, I mean, you've mentioned a few times now how, how much you learn from communication and from talking to each other. And, and I think going back to it was um, Catherine here. No, it wasn't. It was Becky. I just put this up on the screen. For people who are watching the video. So Becky here said medicine is not an exact science. Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. If this was the opener on courses, therapists would be open to evolving their narrative as they grow. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a big thing, isn't it? And that mind it. There you go. If you if you wonder what that kissing sound was, it wasn't me blowing kisses at them. It was actually <laughs> Daniel just showing his. Becky just nails it every time, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Becky perfect. is a, is is the oracle. Yeah, she's brilliant. Um, but yeah, and that reminds me of when Dan, you were talking about how moving around from between people, and rather than I'm generalizing, but so many courses, and if you listen to the podcast, just think of the last course you did. You've got one instructor telling 30 people what they can feel. Mm. You know, can you feel this anterior superior crest? Put your thumb a bit higher. Do you feel it? Does everyone feel it? Now lift your leg up and do this stalk test. Did you feel it go down? Did you? Did you? And everyone just goes, yeah, because yeah. they're embarrassed or, you know, and it's – and and now, bam, you're talking about a course where, you again, you're going around feeling different people 
and then opening up a conversation of what did you feel? What do you reckon that could be? What would you do here? And it's beautiful, isn't it? That's exactly what it should be because mm -hmm. it's not an exact yeah. science. And I love the way Becky says it's a, it is an art as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to mm -hmm. kind of use different strokes and with different people. Oh, that was a beautiful continuation of that um, allergy, yeah. wasn't it? I thought <laughs> that, was like, Matt. that was good. Um, I've got a question. We've got a question from Steve Kirby, actually, who's come in here. Steve, all right, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Steve says, question please for Mike or Daniel. What evidence have either of you seen using DNM on patients aiding motor neuron function? What has been the clinical outcomes? <coughs> Does it mean like strength and power? Is I that, suppose is, again the question would be how to measure it, yeah, yeah and, and yeah. say that that was because of what we've done, I guess. Um, I, I don't, I don't know whether I've used it for performance. Um, it's more for uh, more for pain relief more than anything. Mm. Um, so if someone has, uh, yeah, if someone has symptoms and then uh, they, for whatever reason, they feel like they can't do and um, do a particular movement, so maybe it's um, a lack of strength because of a pain inhibition. Um, and then by providing the area with a different stimulus, then it reduces the sensitivity and then they're able to, to do that movement. So that those are the kind of things that I've, I see. And it's, and it's not rare either. It's, it's very common. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that you would see Steve doing your normal treatments, I, I would imagine. And, but it's, it, it's the explanation of how it's happening. I think that's, yeah. that's the key. That's the key thing. It's not actually what a technique that you do it's um it's uh yeah it's 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 a bit philosophical isn't it it's kind of like a broader thing where you go right okay what am i actually trying to achieve here i'm not trying to push that muscle over that way or move that joint this way i'm just providing a different stimulus and then that stimulus is creating a change and then they're able to do it and um how that mechanism works we don't really fully understand um but we know that something changes I, th I think that's probably the the most honest I could be about it, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Mike's pretty much just stole my answer. So yeah, I'll uh, Sorry, try mate. and add to that. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, yeah, like that. The, the, we we know that pain can inhibit sort of like muscles and stuff like that, and loss of strength. And so that kind of thing, absolutely perfect. Uh, to, we use that in clinic. I use that a lot uh, to distract them from that particular pain sensation, that fear. Uh, to allow them and then we do it while they're while they're squatting while they're doing stuff uh, but I think um, what what you just said there if that's the goal I mean I don't we do that all the time don't let Pilates instructors do that uh, just contract this muscle here and we press on them I go I want you to do this and then we, we touch them it, it's the same thing so you kind of uh, if, if you're trying to go oh just make sure that this is working or do this or this is the muscle that we want you to concentrate on and bias uh, touch that area we touch the skin we, we're not touching the muscle we're touching the skin uh so you're kind of going but instantly they know what you're talking about you, you you're giving that cueing mm -hmm. for a movement via your touch uh and uh, you're, you're not necessarily moving them forcefully into place but they know what you're talking about mm -hmm. very interesting steve you're welcome to come back obviously with a question if if any of them has satisfied you fully and do come back with a with a follow-up i mean it's interesting isn't it because until now a lot of the time as soft tissue therapists we are kind of looking for proof of cause and effect and this works because i did this and so that caused that and a trigger of, of and that's what historically it's always been mm -hmm. and where it sounds i mean and dnm seems to do this as well but it sounds like it goes back to what you said at the beginning we see an outcome and then we're choosing the most likely reason for that happening mm -hmm. trying to do that again it won't be the same each time so our, our our goals are to see whether that person can lift their arms above the head and put something onto the cupboard or whether they can stand up without using a chair or whether when they wake up in the morning it doesn't hurt to the extent that they want to scream or something so and we're not quite sure what it was that we did but we're just trying to narrow it down and funnel it aren't we yeah I, th I think that's exactly it and and for me i think um <laughs> i try not to have arguments online now and uh because it it, I've, it just eats up too much of my time but i <clears throat> i think when somebody is so sure that they've done something to someone to affect something they can't possibly be right uh because there are so many factors involved in why someone might feel different uh that we would we just wouldn't be able to measure it 
that there's that there's just no way so um, we create an environment where we try and tick as many of the boxes as we think will help someone do something the way that they um they would like to do it and we assist them along that way and uh I, mean, I can't remember exactly what it what it was, but um, you know the the old kind of uh, kinetic chain theories about pronated foot, internally rotated tibia, in, and then you know all, all of those um, all of those kinetic chain things, and then that oh yeah, it was because I messed around their foot, that's why their hips better. Well, how do you know that it wasn't something that you said or you did or something else they picked up on, and we're and we're being very reductionist in how we think that pain works if you only explain it in that way and um and and that's the thing i think with like i say dnm is more of a philosophy rather than a technique um and uh, and it just gets you thinking about everything that influences that particular session with that individual daniel is he still on everything you're going to say or sorry mate no um <laughs> yeah uh I, I think yeah um it's 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 a weird one isn't it because uh like you say like those sort of um outdated things uh, can be quite nocebo nocebo sorry is that the right word yeah again i'm uh, i've got a map are you on a sleep study, study? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no oh, yeah. There, we go, there we go um but explain yeah, that so a little bit though but explain for people listening on aware they've probably heard of placebo but what's a nocebo yeah. Uh, so nocebo is a, um, uh, something that you do say um, uh, who you are. They might just not like you uh, and, uh, that can affect a treatment as well. But it's a, it's also the opposite. It's kind of gives you pain because of something that you believe. So you, you kind of you could say something to someone and that's that's there. Like um, uh, Nick Hanna, uh, Hanna Moves, if you've not heard of him, he does a fantastic video that we show all the time where he says, like, oh, you've got the spine of an 80 year old or you've got the, the, the knees of this or something like that. And you shouldn't be doing that. All oh, your hips are out of alignment. And it's like these are all things that can embed a belief into someone that can cause their fear and their pain to escalate and there, there are potential pain contributors to whatever's going on in that biopsychosocial model there they are as greg lehman says with his cup it's filling the cup full of those all those nocebos and those beliefs whereby if you're trying to do something else on top of it it's kind of like like the it's some exercise they're, they're, and they're worried about their alignment while they exercise they're going to they're not going to like it uh kind of thing so yeah nocebos can cause pain basically the opposite of a placebo mm -hmm. but um they don't have to be verbal uh, and i think that's what the, this whole course is as well it's it's not it's not just another technique like mike said it's a concept it's it's what we do it's how we run our whole practice how we uh, it underpins everything we do uh with a nice explanatory model and nocebo is a part of that so um somebody might just not like you as a therapist and that's okay they can go and get help from someone else but they might like uh, as diane says they might not like the tie you're wearing they might not like how you're dressed because they're not accustomed to that massage therapist or that coach or uh, if they're uh, coming to a clinician like um uh, if, if you're not in a suit or you're not in a shirt and uh, trousers that's smartly dressed, a certain type of person might not respond as well as to me, who I'm normally in the gym 80% of my time as well, doing this kind of stuff in trackies and a t-shirt or a polo, uh, or um, it, it's completely different. Uh, uh, and we don't know, but uh, how do we know that we weren't getting as, uh, uh, the efficacy of treatment, sorry, during COVID because we were wearing masks, they couldn't see our faces. Mm -hmm. So all these things as well, like might have been putting these people off. We had to work extra hard, I presume, to try and win these people over uh, and, and get them to feel comfortable in the clinic. And I know Mike's took this to heart because uh, when he, he's got a proper clinic day, he's on, he's properly dressed, he's all groomed, all the products come out, uh, and uh, he com comes in and he's got, um, he's got, uh, he's actually got clouds painting on the ceiling of the treatment room. So I'll let Mike talk to you about that. But that, that that's, is, actually, uh, that's actually Diane Jacobs fault that because <laughs> uh, in her clinic, when she practiced, she had clouds painted on the ceiling. And, uh, and I never thought in a million years that I would be a therapist that would have clouds on my ceiling. But the amount of people that just lie back there and go, oh, wow, that's amazing. 
and uh, uh, and they, they they just they they love it. They love the view. It's great. I just need something on the floor now, so that when they're face down, they uh, they've got a view down there as well. But it's it's, astro turf. But what what, what she said um, that really stuck in that uh, presentation she did um, uh, back in San Diego was uh, you uh, try to demedicalize your environment because that can have a really big impact on how someone feels when they walk into your clinic. And this is all part of DNM. So even though it's not the hands-on bit, it's part of it. So if you've got someone who, you know, hates the dentist, hates going to the doctor, and then you've got a model of a spine with the disc sticking out and you've got a skeleton in the corner, you've got um, all of your anatomy posters all over the walls, it can freak people out. And, uh, and that environment for some people is great because for some people it's like this guy knows what they're doing or this person knows what they're doing. But for some people it can be horrendous and uh, automatically they're on, they're on edge. And, and no matter what you do, um, that they subliminally, that that's how they feel and they just can't help it. So you, you, even walking through the door, you are having an effect on, on someone. And um, yeah, and that, that's, Diane's fault. She uh, she got me thinking about my, the whole kind of clinic experience and and what it's like. And I say this to the guys because when you walk into my clinic, I mean you've been there, Matt. It was a while ago, but it's uh, but in the gym um, straight away. And for some people, that will freak people out. And uh, and I understand that. Um, but there's nothing I can do, unfortunately. So I try to. Rack. Yeah. yeah yeah that's it like oh so what are you uh, gonna make me do yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh you know for, so, for people who are sporty that's great but for people who aren't that's that's a that's a like oh my god so uh yeah we um we uh I, I do try and soften things as much as i can um so that i try to make everybody a bit more comfortable with with the environment that they're in um but yeah that that's that's from diane and my grooming as well i got that from diane. <laughs> it won't be long i mean we're both sitting here with virtual backgrounds apart from daniel but it won't be long i mean after I'm an hour jealous. tonight of looking yeah. at ours he's gonna be how good he's gonna be. i'm hitting up scarsbrook he's, he's gonna he's gonna kit me out with all the kit and show me how to do everything but it won't be long until we until we have virtual clinic backgrounds as well and we'll yeah. adjust the look of the walls of the clinic and everything. I mean, we kind of already do that. Or we should be doing that with music anyway. One of the yeah. big things I learned was I used to have in clinic um, um, little, this is going back, so it's kind of, they weren't little at all. They were the original iPods kind of things, mm -hmm. you know, mounted in a player in the room. And it was only when we decided to take that out and have music piped through that I realized I could no longer say to the client, oh, what do you want to listen to? Because if they're going to lie down for an hour, and chill out and have that because there's nothing magic about saying the words can affect the person music affects you and your mood yeah. there's nothing weird about it it's everything we're multi-sensory beings and everything that goes in our ears and our eyes and our nostrils and what touches us um, and memories and 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 con preconceptions and things we've read all affects us so um we're not really saying anything totally hippie and out there by suggesting that what we say can make a client hurt more because we know that it happens yeah okay, and especially know. if they're in pain already you know yeah, they're, yeah. they're already experiencing pain and then they're coming into potentially uh, uh an environment that would make them feel uncomfortable you know mm. that's of course it's going to affect them yeah right we got some massive take already i'm hoping people listening to the podcast and people who join us live keep those questions coming by the way if you're in the room and you want to ask some questions and feel free i'm keeping my open eye open on you but um so far it sounds like the courses themselves are not only going to show you novel um, lighter ways of touching people with the idea of rather than telling you what to do let's compare the feedback and stuff in the group which sounds like a beautiful setting anyway also it's going to be an eye-opener with terms of things like placebo and contextual effect which is a massive thing which people get confused about is placebo wrong should we be charging people for something that's placebo can we call it placebo etc etc the nocebo thing the vocabulary in the last kind of like five, 10 minutes now, what else do you think are going to be, without giving too much away, are going to be highlights of the course over the two days or the follow-up two days, no, three days, that people are going to think, oh, wow, this is great. What else content-wise um, are people going to I enjoy? think the, uh, the cutaneous nerves is going to be a bit of a mind blower, uh, sort of to see all this, the theory and how you do it. But um, cutaneous nerves are not taught on... Uh, massage uh courses and that's like as mike said it's a bit it's a bit weird because all we're touching is the skin 
uh, uh, but the cutaneous nerves that attach it and the, the whole that's that's the only thing that we're affecting kind of thing so to to understand where they might be where they might offshoot through and go down into the muscles and stuff like that to maybe have more of a specific aim to your treatments that that may help um but also i'm really looking forward to the cranial nerves with uh my creoc and uh, how to affect those i do a lot of jaw and uh sort of like network and stuff and uh, everything around there myself already and i'm sure mike does be an osteo but uh, it's um it's going to be really interesting to sort of map those out as well and say well i'm aiming for this but even though it doesn't really matter because we're just touching the skin on a hurty area but it guides my treatment again into and and, and lends me to think oh maybe it could be this as well or a bit more efficiently but yeah i think the cranial nerves are going to blow people's minds uh, as to wow okay how uh, normally i'd just poke and prod someone's head until maybe it went away uh, but then there's more of a, a treatment to it yeah a bit more reasoning i think yeah yeah reasoning yeah i think um uh, because Di diane obviously did did some work with david butler as well and um i think mike uh, especially looks at uh, neurodynamics quite a lot so uh, again it's an area that um uh, again not 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 covered on sports massage at level three certainly and and even at level four maybe some level five courses depending on where you study but um it's it's not something that is widely known so knowing the pathway of those nerves and the different positions that you can place the body into to um help to elongate those nerves and then provide movement through them um that i think that that will be that will be really good uh, for people to uh, for people to learn um some and again something that i'm i'm looking forward to uh getting into um but yeah the 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 cranial nerves again um for me i, I think that's going to be really good um i've been um uh teaching a bit more about the uh subcut um cutaneous nerves so the, the nerves in the skin uh basically to refresh my memory <laughs> of uh of those uh those things because I, I i i haven't really used them in my reasoning for a long time so it's starting and i need to i need to for me i need that cpd to kind of um yeah remind me of of what to do as well so yeah i'm, I'm definitely definitely looking forward to that got a couple of questions about the courses itself so it can either be done in birmingham yep um in harbornia in your place yep. that's yep. it um or kind of the the a week after that if people find it easy to get to exeter to yep. James, James Morgan's place at the Bear yep. for Exeter. Um, what are, do people ideally, are you doing day one and day two or are the, the first course and the second course, or could you do just one or the other or what's the you, you choice could, there? Yeah, you could do one or the other. D uh, depends um, on what you, what your background is, I guess. Um, so if you've looked at it a little bit before, you might be okay just doing a three day workshop and then you, you basically choose whichever person you think is the best for you. So uh, whether you've looked at Ray and you think, yeah, I love his stuff or prefer Mike and the way that he delivers. Um, but yeah, if you've never really done anything before, never looked at neuroanatomy, you're going to need the six days um, because uh, there's, yeah, there's you, your head's going to be blown off on the first three days. You're going to have then a couple of months, like Dan said, to kind of consolidate that and reflect on it. And then you've got another three days with Ray just to practice over things again. So, um, yeah, I think it depends on your on your background experience, really. And if people aren't sure and they want some information, then I guess that's something they could talk to you about and see what do you think would be best for me? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm more than happy to uh, to help out with any questions. And then we've got um, the website uh, dnm.education. And uh, that's the DNM UK site. So uh, we've got, um, there's loads of stuff. In fact, Dan helped put it together. Uh, got loads of resources from Diane on there as well and some videos. So if you want to have a look at some of the stuff, then that's that's on there as well. DNM.education. Good choice yeah. rather than dermanuromodulation.education. Yeah. That'd just be a nightmare. <laughs> Imagine that's a Twitter handle. Um, <laughs> And if you wanted to kind of take advantage and, and go to Birmingham to see your fantastic clinic and then maybe hop over to Exeter for day for the next part, could you do that? Could you start yeah. off with a bit of your... Yeah, yeah, again? you can do that. Yeah, we've got a couple of students doing that already, yeah. Because James has got a relatively new studio as well, though, isn't he? Well, yeah, I think so. A, a refurb recently, yeah, yeah. 
um if you're interested in uh yeah james morgan just a shout out really um interesting um clued up guy uh, barefoot physio um on facebook i think mainly yeah um, worth checking out and that's who's hosting the other course if you're closer to exeter then um it's all on his website as well barefoot physio it's probably a dot com or something like that um cool okay um dates wise it's pretty soon isn't it yeah uh it is i think it's sorry 12, 12, 12 13th 14th i think uh let me just have a quick look yeah 12 13th 14th is part one okay and that's birmingham and it's the the, the three a week after that if you wanted to start an exeter a week after that for exeter yeah okay and then the second part is in june right in june yeah let me just have a look um i don't think i've got the dates oh yeah here we go yeah it's the fourth fifth and sixth okay yeah, in birmingham and then the yeah. week after if you wanted to do it in exeter instead fantastic we'll make sure all these details obviously go in the show notes which you can check out at www.thesta.co.uk um but also i'll add it to the podbean if you follow us on podbean uh, platform then it'll also be in the show notes there as well um cool okay and and this is the beginning hopefully of an increase in the we started off kind of like having a little bit of a laugh at the name dermo neuromodulation but dermo neuromodulation in the uk by all the sounds of it should be something that people are a bit more familiar with as this course goes on and people yeah. start doing it and talking about it yeah hopefully like like dan said um diane is really she wants dnm to be out there she wants everybody to know about it and everybody to do it so there there's no copyright on anything you basically just use stuff and we out of politeness asked if we could deliver her course uh in the uk and uh, she was more than happy for us to uh to do that so we will we'll be continuing it after the uh, after mike and ray uh have been over uh, we're gonna try and get the ball rolling on dnm uk and get it out there a bit more yeah fantastic but yeah but i mean and you guys are great anyway and hopefully this if you're listening to the podcast and these guys are really clued up um but mike and ray also if you don't follow them on uh again facebook ray in particular is pretty active on facebook isn't he, he likes to he doesn't like avoiding arguments he likes to get right in there so yeah ray allen r-e-y Alan, check him out on Facebook if you want a, a little bit of a read up on what that's all about. Again, some fascinating arguments, um, just in the in the good sense of the word. Intelligent mm -hmm. people reasoning and backing it up, and often challenging the other to the extent the other might go mm, interesting, and they'll go quiet for a while. It's it's really healthy. What should yeah. be what debate's all about. Uh, Mike, Mike, um, I haven't seen so much. What does he normally hang out? Is he on Facebook as well? If people wanted to catch up with him yeah mainly facebook i think dan is it yeah. yeah it does a bit on yeah, Twitter, a bit, a bit, I think. yeah. He's, he's becoming more active now i think uh okay. he's doing a few more small videos and stuff like that cool. um Excellent. venturing out um uh, i mean if you want to sort of get to know ray or mike Rioc, uh e either one they did uh, for the first round of dnm courses that we were supposed to be getting them over for in 2020 before uh lockdown covid and everything this is the them finally coming over and we've been waiting it's, it's we've been waiting a long time so they won't won't disappoint but they did a 40 minute chat about dnm as well so if uh not just us as hosts sort of like saying what we know about dnm but they did a 40 minute chat for us and we've put it on our um uh, the movement therapy education um facebook page and i've just reshared it again from the first time we did it two years ago oh, okay. and uh so it's on there now and it's um uh, it's 40 minutes of ray and mike talking dnm talking concepts probably in a little bit more detail because they've they, they they can um than this tonight uh but in, in a different way um so mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, you'll get to know them a little bit more and then if you are only doing one of the courses with us you can pick which one you want to go and see or you you resonate with a little bit more or come and see us both yeah so uh yeah they are good guys fantastic and um, we'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure i get the link off you for that and put that in the show notes as well and again we were talking about this off air or maybe it was when we started often the name of the person we love it because we kind of grown up as therapists with them and we'd known their names and sometimes they're people we may not have met but we started following them on twitter or something maybe five ten years ago or more so not everyone is kind of sold by the name but if you want to know a little bit more about who will be teaching you then it's it's interesting i think anyway because you get to know where they're from um okay fantastic um is there anything else it's we've gone over time now i'm conscious that i'm keeping you 
um you guys if they do want to contact you are they best going through movement therapy website yeah or? movement therapy education facebook page is probably the best yeah you can contact okay. us on there yeah both myself and dan yeah. so if somebody's listening to the podcast and they type movement therapy education to facebook yeah it'll come up and then they can um talk to you guys there if they want details yeah. about the course um fantastic okay and it's and it's starting soon presumably we're talking about this because there are spaces left it's not sold out already we have uh, and i know this sounds like a sales <laughs> thing but we li we do literally have two places left um okay, yeah. so uh, yeah if if you are thinking about um uh thinking about doing it then yeah a couple of places left is that for both Birmingham and Exeter? I'm not sure about Exeter, actually. I'm, um, I've, I think it's about. I think we've got about the same kind of numbers. We, we've kept it deliberately low, so we've got. Um, we're going to have a maximum of twelve on the course. Mm -hmm. So, because um, we wanted to make sure that um, you get plenty of time with Michael Ray, and I think James has done the same in in Exeter as well. So, I think we're on around about the same kind of numbers. So, fantastic. Yeah. Right, guys. And, um, just one more. Uh, we did get a message from someone uh, earlier on today. Well, uh, through Francesca, who's uh, James's uh, wife, I believe, um, and uh, it, it, they wanted to know uh, whether Ray and Mike were practicing. How did they use it in uh, like clinic and stuff like that? And yeah, they've been doing it for years. They, they've been they've been uh, RMTs, as they say in Canada, and stuff like that. So massage therapists and using DNM for twelve to fifteen years. They incorporate it every single day. So uh, just to sort of um, answer that question and kind of uh, uh, put their mind at ease that yeah, it is. Um, they are experienced. They are as as experienced as they come. They learned directly from Diane and uh, have been teaching for a long time. And um, yeah that's uh that they are that we wouldn't have got them over otherwise mm -hmm. definitely no they're they're the you know, who is interested and a bit geeked into it then yeah they're both very big names ray originally was rolfing probably still calls it rolfing but he was yeah. which is really interesting as well because you're looking at somebody who's not just going to appear on the scene and go oh everything you're doing is wrong you don't need to do this no he's been there and he's analyzed what he originally did and the mechanisms of action he thought it was taught was happening back in the day with Ida Rolf and the whole Rolfing kind of theory, which kind of was pre all myofascial release and stuff. That's mm -hmm. where myofascial release came from years and years ago. And it's only by critically appraising his own beliefs that he's come around now and kind of evolved. And that's why mm -hmm. we're always going on to the show about stop and evaluate what you're doing and what you're saying to your client is it possible that you're actually doing that we've already said i think you translate into kilos i i use newtons but that's just the physician I mean, what is it in 460 kilos you say yeah. or something yeah it's an awful lot of kilos to deform fascia by one percent it's yeah. more than you could if you say to a surgeon and we've said this a few times but if you say to a surgeon i break down scar tissue with my elbow they're going to go well, that's really cool because it i need a scalpel yes. you know it's kind of what say, yeah with, with the dissections i've done it it blunts scalpels there you go so <laughs> again the wrong person at the wrong time that could seem like i'm really putting you down because you may base seven days a week of practice and breaking down scar tissue but hopefully you listen to back to what both mike and daniel have said we're not saying that what you're doing doesn't have an effect on the person mm -hmm. because obviously you wouldn't have a business and you wouldn't be able to feel proud of yourself at all if it was failure after failure after failure you might be forgetting some of the failures and just brushing them under the carpet and just reflecting on the good times when it did work which is another story but as soon as you put your hands on someone, you're having an effect on them. As soon as you say something to someone, I, you can make someone relax their trapezius muscles just by saying, it's going to be okay. And magically through those words, their shoulders will go, oh, thank God. You did that with the power of just three words, you know, four words, it's going to be okay. So it's nothing magical there. It's just, it sounds like the course is going to be a really good way of putting everything we've said in the last kind of year and a half together and allowing you to be fantastic with your hands and still be a soft tissue therapist do what you love but in a more modern evolved less wrong way which can only make be better for your patients which is what it's all about isn't it at the end of the day Perfect. cool mike daniel thank you so much you're welcome your yeah thanks. good to chat, mate um thanks for having really me on cool. Um, no, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. And and if anyone's not following Daniel, it's just an inspirational mountain of a man. Not so much a mountain now, actually. How much weight have you lost now? Without getting too four close. Half, uh, four and a half stone. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> no, beautiful. Um, but it's not just the fact that you've run 120 
115 today. Yeah, you're overselling me there, Matt. Yeah, Watch nearly that, there. Though. If you follow Daniel, you'll realise it's not just another run streak. Because let's face it, I mean, the world record for run streaks, I don't know what it is. I think it's something like 32 years or something. It's ridiculous. But it's yeah. the message that Daniel puts into each of his days. It's just beautiful. So if you're not following Thank Daniel you. already, yeah. it's inspiration or even inspiration to give to your clients, then bam, mm -hmm. follow Daniel. Um, Thank you. And that's really good stuff, mate. Oh, now I've got to carry on, Matt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, I reached <laughs> 31 years ago. <laughs> I should have reached 129 and I'm not going to talk to you anymore. But I just, oh, yeah. Just one. But yeah, I, I mean, I know some people who just haven't stopped and I don't know what the record is. It's something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but that's not the well, point, is it? It's no. what you learn each day. What I love about your post is it's what you've learned each day and reflected on during mm. your run that is so beautiful. And, and yeah, it's really cool. It's very inspiring. Thank you right guys um next week join us um our focus on cpd goes to the great peter maliaris who's going to be coming over to the uk um and we're going to forget about the rest of the body just focus on tendons that's all we're going to do so all of this is no it's not at all peter again is someone who's been around uh, for a long time with a uh, uh, specific focus particularly on tendons but yes you will see has evolved a lot as of all these great therapists mm -hmm. but it is going to be there is a um a course um, regarding um, treating um, tendinopathies and, and the like, uh, which is coming out of the UK. So we'll be talking to Pete directly again next week on Tuesday at 8 o'clock live. So if you are listening to the podcast in between, then and you want to come and join us live and speak to the other people in the room, then, then join us 8 o'clock UK time. Otherwise, uh, look forward to the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast if you can, because then you'll get notifications when new things have been uploaded. There's already 89 other episodes to listen to. So hopefully you've got a great amount of cpd already there without spending um, a penny but if you do want to spend some money um, and you want some quality cpd it started here tonight have a think about dermo neuro modulation right i'm going to sign off you guys don't go away i'll say goodbye to you once um, i shut down the lounge here um hopefully we'll see you next tuesday so from mike grice and daniel williams um we'll say good night cheers guys thanks cheers bye-bye